In this video, we'll learn how to calculate E versus E standard. Okay, remember the difference, right? So the standard means that you're at one mole per liter if you're a solute, you're at one atmosphere if you're a gas. E means you're at whatever condition you might be currently in. So how would we do that? Well, we remember from the thermo chapter that delta G is delta G standard plus RT natural log Q, where Q is the reaction quotient. And we've already seen that delta G is related to the cell voltage via this equation here. And I won't write the cell in down here. We can also guess that delta G standard would be exactly equal to minus NF E cell standard. And so now we can just kind of substitute these two values in. So we can take delta G and delta G standard, and we can write it in terms of our cell voltages. So that gives us minus NFE under the current conditions is equal to minus NFE standard under standard conditions plus RT natural log Q. And if we just want E by itself, we can divide both sides by minus NF. That will give us the cell voltage is equal to the standard cell voltage minus RT over NF times by the natural log of the reaction quotient. So that allows us to convert between the actual cell voltage under current conditions and the standard cell voltage under standard conditions. And this equation here is commonly known as the Nernst equation after a very famous physiologist called Walter Nernst. Let's go ahead and use the Nernst equation. So for instance, let's calculate the cell voltage for this battery or this cell. Technically, a battery is one or more cells. So we're going to build a silver electrode on the left-hand side. But we're not going to be at standard conditions. So our concentration is going to be 0 0.010 moles per liter. And there's our salt bridge. And then on the other side, we're going to have gold, because why not? And uh, we're going to make it at, say, 2 moles per liter. So definitely not standard conditions. And a solid gold electrode on the other side. And we're going to do this at 25 degrees C. And we have calculated, I believe, earlier that the standard cell voltage for this one is positive 0.7 volts. So if you look up the electrode potential for gold and for silver and you subtract one from the other, you get positive 0.7. All right, so how would we do that? So first off, we need to write the overall balanced equation. So we know that the silver is going to silver ions plus an electron. We know that there are three electrons being added to the gold, sorry, not silver, forming gold. Those we just get from tables. We actually did it before, so check back in your notes. We know that we've got to multiply by three, otherwise we get rogue electrons. So there's three silvers, let me write the state symbols in, and a, a gold three going to three silvers. And again, some people write these as equilibriums. We probably should, to be honest, plus one gold solid. Okay, and it's a three electron transfer. So that's a three electron transfer. And that means that in our Nernst equation, by the way, n, the number of moles of electrons is equal to three. All right, so how are we going to do this? So we plug it into the Nernst equation. So the Nernst equation says E is E standard minus RT over NF natural log of Q. So we can build that and E standard was positive 0.7 volts minus R, so 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, T is 298 Kelvin, N is three, and F is 96,500. That's the Faraday coulombs per mole. And the natural log of Q, well, Q is the reaction quotient. So um, it's been a little while, but we can write a reaction quotient. It is the concentration of products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric power. So we've got silver ions, so we need to cube those. Remember, solids don't enter into these expressions. And exactly the same thing on the left-hand side, we've got a gold, three positive, but there's just one of them, so we don't raise it to anything other than the one power. Okay, so at the end of the day, then when we take the logarithm here, we've got the concentration of silver cubed. So silver was 0.01, cubing it and we're dividing by gold, which was two. 
And so we can see that, what's that going to be? So that is going to be smaller than 1. When we take the logarithm of a number smaller than 1, it's going to give us a negative. Two negatives make a positive. So we can see anytime the reaction quotient is smaller than 1, it's going to lead to an increase in the cell voltage. So if you're going to design your own battery, you need to make sure your reaction quotients are less than 1 to do that. And if you plug the numbers in and you remember one little thing, and that is that 1 volt is one joule per coulomb. So on the right hand side, when you cancel the units, you'll get joules per coulomb, but of course those are just volts. You'll get your overall voltage, and I believe that should be positive 0 0.82 volts. So there we've calculated the voltage of our equation. Now you can actually use this as a chemical sensor, so that concentration, as it changes, it will lead to a change in this concentration here, it'll change the Q, it'll change the voltage. So you can imagine building these little sensors that respond to the concentration of these ions. And uh, it's very easy to build something that will detect a voltage change. In fact, a pH meter, all it does is essentially responds to the concentration change, which causes a voltage change. And you just have to know how the voltage maps to the pH. So we've built ourselves a chemical sensor doing this. Wasn't that amazing?